Hello there. Welcome to our today's science lesson. Our topic for the day being change of state and the kinetic theory. Looking at the previous topics we have been covering in relation to this, we saw that kinetic theory is a theory that tries to explain what happens when particles are given more energy or reduced the amount of energy in those particles. We saw that when energy is added into any particular state, the particles in the state gain more energy that makes them to be able to move much faster. Or the other way can be the energy is reduced, making the particles to have less energy, making them to move in a much slower rate. This energy we are talking about is just an improvement or a reduction in temperature in that particular state. Today, we want to look at how that now movement in terms of either more energy or less energy in the particles, which leads to the formation of the kinetic theory of matter, result into the changes of state. How does matter, a substance, change from solid to liquid, or liquid to gas, or vice versa, from gas to liquid, then liquid to solid? All this is in how much energy a particle has in that particular state. And in a broader way of understanding, we are just talking about the kinetic theory. Now, starting off, we need to understand how particles are, behave, and can be changed in each of the three states of matter, as we already know. It can be a revision of what we have already been doing, but we need again to remind of our, uh, ourselves of the same so that we can be able to see how now it will be changing from that, that you already know in that state, to another state, what we call changes of state. Starting with the solids, we understand that solids as a state of matter has particles in it. And these particles in the solid state of matter are closely packed together. The particles are closely packed together. As they are closely packed together, it makes them not to have any allowance of movement. So the only kind of movement particles in solid state can have is vibrate at fixed position. Vibrate at fixed position. The other issue we have to note on the solids is they all have definite shape. A solid will just take its own particular shape and maintains the shape forever because the particles are in a fixed position and vibrating in that fixed position. The other issue we need to understand about the solids in terms of now kinetic theory is the particles have the least amount of energy, the least amount of energy, and that is what makes the particles not to be able to move, but instead just vibrate. We also need to understand that the other state of matter is liquids. In a liquid state, in a liquid state, the particles are close together, but not as much as in solid state. Close. 
close together, but in comparison to solid state, they are not as much. As you can see, yes, they are close, but not as much as solid. And because of this, eh, these particles in a liquid state eh, are, have slightly more energy than in a solid state. Having that high energy in a comparison to solid state, eh, it makes these particles to be able to roll over each other. There's that freedom. The forces have been weakened. The forces holding these particles together, they have been weakened. So having been weakened, they allow the particles now to roll over. Let's assume these are particles. These are particles. It rolls over. As it rolls over, it is free to take any position in the container it is being held, as long as it is at the lower part. It cannot roll over going up. It will always roll over going down. Just like if you have ice cream, it is melting. It will never melt going up. It will melt as it rolls down because of gravity force that pulls all materials downwards. Particles are rolling over. Reason? The forces holding the particles have been weakened. Allowing the particles to roll over. And as they roll over, here we say that the solids have a definite shape. Can be cubical, rectangular, circular, whichever. But liquids have no definite shape. Liquids will always take the shape of the container because of having rolled to take all that position. We also need to understand that though they roll, taking the shape of the container, they don't occupy the whole space of the container. They will only reach to that particular level. Just like as I asked you in the previous lesson, if you have juice in a class, transfer it into a cup, which is of different shape. And you'll find that it will still fit in that cup, but take the shape of the cup. Just like it took the shape of the glass. Same thing could not happen for the solid. If you had cubes of ice, you transfer that cube of ice from one container to another, it will, stick the, it will still take the shape of that cube and not the shape of the container. But here, you take the shape of the container. The third state of matter is gas. Where the particles are far apart. So here, the particles are far apart because of the forces holding the particles in liquid and solid being more strong, the particles were close. But here, the particles are far apart, meaning that the forces are excessively weak, making the particles to break away from each other, making them to move randomly. And in addition, these particles have more energy, more kinetic energy, which is due to probably increase in temperature. So as you increase temperature, you increase kinetic energy. And as you increase kinetic energy, you increase the rate at which the particles will be moving. And as they increase in the rate at which they are moving, more collisions is done. As they collide more, they move far away randomly, filling the whole container. So one property has already uh, come out of that, that gases will always fill all the parts of the container into which they are being held. Another thing, particles in a gas are far apart from each other, showing that the forces holding the particles close are very, very weak. The other thing is, particles in a gas state move randomly. Now, this is just an aspect of kinetic theory. Let's fuse now this kinetic theory into how do we change now from solid to liquid or liquid to gas. And after this, 
I will give you as an assignment on how do we now change, explain how using the kinetic theory, how you can change from gas to liquid or liquid to gas. Let's try to explain how the kinetic theory comes in when changing states from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. Starting with the change from solid to liquid, you change state through addition of heat energy. You change state through addition of heat energy. That is from solid to liquid. The heat energy added into the particles that are in a solid state only does one thing weakens or you can say breaks the bonds breaks the forces holding the particles in solid state it weakens breaks the forces that hold the particles in solid state but how does it do it it does it by making these particles in solid state to vibrate much stronger in a um, a much higher rate at which it is vibrating is now more than it was previously. Take it like these are solid. This is the rate at which it was vibrating. Now as you add in more heat energy, it now increases the rate at which it is vibrating. If it does that, and there are so many, you will find that there is a kind of weak point that is created and this weak point is created in all the particles the weak point is created in all the particles let's take an example of like the one i gave previously you are seated on chairs students five of you you are seated on four chairs one is extra because a chair is for one student but here you are, five of you, seated on four that are close by. When you are seated still, you may fit on the four chairs, the five of you. But if you start moving what we can take as vibration, you will find that the ones seated on the edges of the four seats will start complaining because they will say you are pushing me away from the chair why and yet you previously the four of you had fitted in the four chairs the answer to that is the movement the vibrations you are now having is making you to move away from the chair and if it does so much then there's a likelihood one of you or even the two the ones on the periphery will fall off. By falling off, we can say you are now changing the state. You are changing from that state of being still, that is solid state, to that state of being mobile. Because when you fall off, it means you will go to the floor. You become a liquid. The answer in this, the particles having gained more energy become more vibrative and by being more vibrative you now break the forces holding the particles together and by breaking the forces holding the particles together the particles start rolling over each other and as they roll over each other they start assuming a different state because you are rolling from steel, now you are rolling. They assume a different state, and that state is a liquid, a process we call melting. So, at this point, we shall call the process melting. The particles that were still started vibrating so heavily because of the high heat energy which broke the forces holding the particles together making the particles to start rolling over each other assuming a new state 
which is a liquid, a process called melting. The second process here is moving now from liquid to gas. The same thing happens. We are still adding in more heat energy. When changing state, we are talking about that temperature, that magical temperature, whereby one state is moving to another. We don't look at the transitional temperature of if melting is taking place at zero degrees centigrade and boiling is taking place at 100 degrees centigrade. We are not looking at the range between zero and 100. We are only looking at what is happening at zero degrees centigrade and what is happening at 100 degrees centigrade. So at 100 degrees centigrade, we are having a liquid, for example, water which is to move from liquid state to gas state at a hundred <coughs> sorry at a hundred degrees centigrade so what happens here is at that a hundred degrees centigrade heat energy is still being added in you are still boiling the water as you boil you are adding in heat energy as you do so the forces holding the particles in liquid state. The force that can only allow the particles to roll over each other but no any other kind of movement apart from rolling over are now broken. These particles roll even faster. They roll even faster. Take an example of an inclined plane at this angle. A very small inclined angle can be long enough then take a marble release it at this point to roll it will roll then reach the terminal point where the platform is flat and it will stop take another second position where you incline the plane at a bigger angle at the end is flat release the same marble. You will realize that since the marble will be moving very fast, meaning that it has more energy and like it was in the previous case, it has now more energy, it will roll and will roll until it goes beyond the flat point flying away. Why did it fly away? Because it came at a very fast speed unlike this one which came at slightly low speed so it will move and maybe probably stop at this point but this one coming at a very fast speed it will come past even this flat point and fly over the magic here is in the speed at which you are moving but what made it to move at a faster speed it is because of the energy it was having so when you add in more heat energy in the liquid particles, they move much faster. They roll over the, the way the marble was rolling. It was rolling, but rolling very fast. As it rolls very fast, it breaks away from others because they have now more energy. So roll very fast until you break away from the others. By breaking away from the others, it means you are in the air, in the space having changed now the state from liquid to gas. Breaking away means you are on your own, moving on your own randomly and very fast. And the only particle that suits now that characteristic is a gas particle. Moving very fast, broken away from each other and moving randomly. That proper, proper, uh, property or characteristic only fits a gaseous state. So what are we seeing here? Liquid moving to gas, the energy added makes the particles to move very fast, to roll over each other very fast, and by rolling over each other very fast, they bro uh, break away. 
they break away from each other. When they break away from each other, the particles move away, far away from one another. And by doing so, the particles move in a random manner. And by moving away from each other and in a random manner, they then move to fill all the parts of the container, fulfilling the properties as given by the gaseous state. So what we have been doing is we have been explaining what happens to particles for them to move from one state to another. And we have discovered that for you to be able to explain how states change from one, uh, one state to another, you have to put in the kinetic theory of matter. And in putting in kinetic theory of matter, you will have to look at the amount of energy in particles. And in addition of energy in any particle, it means you are just improving the speed at which the particle will be moving. So this state is boiling. So in summary, you have to be very careful in linking these aspects. One, change of state. Change of state comes in because of change in the amount of energy. And change in the amount of energy leads to high kinetic energy and high kinetic energy leads to high rate of movement and now it is the high rate of movement that leads to change in state and that is from solid to liquid and liquid to gas as a question i would like you to explain just like as I've done, in a reverse way, explain what will happen or what happens for one to change from a gas state to a liquid state and thereafter a liquid state to a gas state. What happens? This is the reverse of what we have just been talking about the answer to that question is let's look at energy in the first case of moving from solid to gas through the liquid we were talking about addition of energy which led to high kinetic energy and later on leading to high movement of the particles for the solids more vibration for the liquids faster rate or faster speed at which the particles roll and in the gas faster movement of the particles here we are going to look at withdraw or reduction in energy so we are talking about reduction in energy first one was addition of energy. Second, to answer the question I've given you, we are going to look at reduction, subtraction of energy in the particles. Starting with the gas, when you reduce <coughs> energy in the gaseous particles, you reduce on their speed of movement. Take an example of a moving vehicle. When it is on the highway, it is moving very fast. But just before taking a turn, you will not still be moving at the same speed. You will have to reduce on the speed. What is it that you are doing on that vehicle for it to reduce on the speed? One, you can reduce on the amount of fuel being applied. You will reduce on how much you are holding on that fuel battle. 
If you reduce on it, then less will be going into the engine. And therefore, less energy will be transmitted into the tire, making them roll now less faster. Here you are not applying brakes. We are just talking about how much fuel are you going now to use. As you continue reducing on the amount of fuel going into the engine, the vehicle will still also continue reducing on the speed at which it is moving. Until if you stop applying the fuel, the vehicle will also move to a point where it will stop. And that is what we are talking about here. These particles in a gaseous state <coughs> are moving very fast, just like a vehicle on a highway. Now start reducing the amount of fuel in the vehicle. Here, start reducing the amount of energy. And that is cooling. You start cooling. So here, reducing the amount of heat energy can, is taken as cooling. You are cooling the gas. It was hot. You are talking about steam. It's hot. It now meets a surface. You remember the case of steam shower. In a shower, you are showering warm water. A lot of steam is going out. Then the steam comes in contact with the, a mirror. What happened was the mirror was turning misty, meaning that the steam was being turned into a liquid. A process we called condensation is the same case here. So, on cooling these gaseous particles, you are reducing on their kinetic energy, the particles, you are reducing on their kinetic energy. As a result, you are reducing on their speed of movement. When this speed of movement comes to a point very low, to as if it is just rolling, it was moving. But now, it is moving as if it is just rolling. Then, it makes the particle to assume a different state of rolling. If you are running and you reduce on the speed of running, but you are still moving, we shall not call it running, we shall call it walking. So here, if the particle is moving and you reduce on the speed of moving until it is to the level of rolling, then we don't call it moving, but we call it rolling. But of these two states, which one fits? The characteristic of rolling, that is a liquid. So when you reduce the amount of energy which is cooling, the gaseous state particles move to liquid state, a process called condensation. A process called condensation. So condensation is the process where Gaseous particles lose their energy by cooling until they change state into a liquid state. The process is condensation. To move on, we are moving now from liquid to solid. The same situation applies. Withdraw heat energy. Continue cooling. You are now reducing on the temperature of this liquid. Maybe here you had cooled from 100 to 99, 98, 90, 80. You continue until you reach 0 degrees centigrade. At 0 degrees centigrade, if at sea level, and you are talking about water, something else will again happen. And that is, you will have to change state from liquid to solid. Why? Because these particles that were once moving, now you reduce the speed at which of, uh, they were moving, now they, it was at the rolling level. Even this rolling, you start reducing at the level at which they are rolling. Reduce, reduce, reduce. It will reach a point where the rolling will no longer be there and the particle will be at a static position. At that static position, though your eye may not be able to tell it, 
But at that static position, now the particle will only be vibrating and not rolling. So if it was rolling and now it is static, that's a different characteristic. So we have to check between L and S, that is liquid and solid, which one fits that characteristic? And the answer is solid. In a solid state, particles are static. They only vibrate in fixed positions. They don't roll. And in so doing, you will have changed the state from liquid state to solid state, a process called freezing. A process called freezing. So in this process called freezing, we have seen the particles that were once rolling are no longer rolling, but they are static. They were rolling, they are vibrating in a fixed position. They were not very much close, but here they are closely packed because as they roll, they go pack themselves in a particular position and remain there, but very close to each other, having changed state from liquid to solid. So that answers the question I had given you of explaining using kinetic theory on how you can move from gas to solid through liquid state. And in summary, <clears throat> this is a process that involves withdraw or subtraction or reduction of heat energy. In general, what we call cooling. And as you cool, you reduce on the speed of movement of particles and because of that they will be later on reduced to changed made to change from one state to another having looked at this can this be able to assist us explain some of the observations we make in our daily lives and the answer is yes Let's see some of these observations. One of the observations is, if you keep a chocolate bar in your shirt pocket, when you come to eat it, it will be softer than when you put it into that pocket. I'm sure at one time you have encountered this. You bought your sweet chocolate, place it in a pocket. It can be jacket, whatever. But at least at a warmer point. Because outside here, it might be cold. But inside my pocket here, it's hot. It's a bit warm. So at the point of eating, if you didn't know that it happens that way, I'm sure you are shocked. What has happened? My chocolate is too soft and maybe eating it when soft is not so, so nice. You want it a little bit hard. To explain what had happened is that chocolate was a solid. The chocolate bar was a solid. And at the time you are buying it, it was at a cold condition, a cold place. So, the particles in that chocolate, which is solid, were still vibrating under that fixed position. However, on putting the chocolate in a pocket, which is warm, you are adding in heat energy to the particles. So, by adding in the heat energy, you made now the chocolate particles to start vibrating, but a little bit harder. Previously, this is how it was uh, probably vibrating. Then, on putting the pocket, gaining more heat energy from the warmth of the pocket, it started now increasing at the rate at which it is vibrating. But it's not so strong to break off. It is just a little bit more than it was previously. Maybe the extreme can be 
at this point it had not reached there because once it reaches there it will now melt to liquid but here we are not being told that it has melted so it means it's only vibrating a little bit harder but not as hard to make the particles break off to start rolling so by the particles vibrating a little bit harder than they were when you are buying it from the shelf it made the particles to move to start moving to readjust themselves and by readjusting themselves some are attempting to start rolling but not yet they are just attempting in addition to vibrating they are attempting to roll but not yet doing it you just want to move but you are not moving you want to move but you are not moving but you have made an attempt that make uh, th that aspect of making an attempt is what made this chocolate bar appear soft than it was previously in case you keep the chocolate much longer in the pocket and maybe if it was a shirt now you add on a more cloth uh, a more warm cloth you may find that even the chocolate will melt that means the vibration is even now more strong that it breaks away to make the chocolate particles to roll over what we call melting another aspect we can look at is it is much easier to notice the perfume someone is wearing on a summer day than on a winter day explain in terms of kinetic theory just like we have done for the one of the chocolate we explain using the kinetic theory why do you think during summer somebody can pass by you but slightly even far away from you but you can easily notice the perfume and you can even comment that's a good perfume because you have gotten it but during winter somebody can be much closer even to you but it will take you longer to notice the perfume and that is if you will do because you can easily miss it completely and yet it is the same perfume is the same person you are the same person the same sense of smell no problem you are not sick the answer to this lies in the energy of the particles energy of the particles during summer the temperatures are high the outside the atmospheric temperatures are high sometimes they go as high as 25 28 degrees centigrade and during winter temperatures go to extreme low temperatures some areas experience up to negative temperatures at those two extreme temperatures at high temperature particles having more energy meaning more kinetic energy it makes the energy makes the movement of the particles in that gaseous state a perfume is a gas the particles in the gaseous state to move even faster even if there are gases a gas can move faster or can move much slower in a much slower manner the only difference here will be the amount of energy the particle will be having so if this particle is having very high energy because of the summer heat moving very fast then that particle will move from the person wearing the perfume to the per person sensing the perfume within a shorter period the air particles will be colliding with the perfume particles very fast because of the high movement moving it pushing it as it moves randomly to fill the whole space and that whole space includes the person who is to sense the perfume during winter the particles will be having less energy meaning that they are moving at a slower speed by the time the perfume particle moves from the wearer of the perfume to the one sensing the perfume it will have taken a longer period the, the time uh, the time lapse 
will be longer. The collisions of the air particles and the perfume particles is low. Slow and low. So being slow and low, the particle will take a longer period to reach the person who is to sense the perfume. Now, because of all that we have been explaining, can you please tell me what could be the hidden issue in all of this? That uh, what causes particles in the matter to move faster? What causes particles in the matter to move faster? Because in all these states of matter, whether you are changing from solid to gas, or gas to solid through liquid, you are just talking about how fast or how slow matter is moving. So what causes particles of matter to move faster? And the answer is heat energy. The answer is heat energy. It is heat energy that makes the particles to move faster. By them having the heat energy, which later on, because of the heat energy, improves on the temperature. Because the higher the heat energy, the higher the temperature. And because of that temperature, which is the heat energy, it is one and the same. High heat energy, high temperature. High temperature, high heat energy. So, because of the heat energy, it makes the particles to have more energy that makes them to move faster and resulting into the changes in state depending on from which state to another. Another question pertaining the same is explain what will happen if you have a substance or what happens if you have a substance that moves directly from solid to gas without passing through liquid state. It is still a change of state, but now you can see it is avoiding one of the states, and that is the liquid state. So we are looking at a situation whereby we are moving directly from solid to gas, or from gas to solid. This is solid and this is gas. Using kinetic theory, explain this. A state where a substance or matter moves directly from solid to gas. A process we normally call sublimation. A process called Sublimation. The answer to that question is when you have a solid, the its particles will be vibrating in a fixed position. But as you hit the particles, they gain the energy, they gain energy very fast. You see, materials vary. There is one that will gain at a, a progressive level. But there's one that will gain the energy or lose the energy very fast. When doing that, you will not go through the same route. The one who gains or loses very slowly, progressively, and the one who loses or gains very fast will not always go through the same state. Just like you are moving very fast, like you are running, and you abruptly stops what we can call probably emergency brakes. What will happen to that moving object? It can easily topple over. It will fly. That is, it was a solid, now it's a gas. It is flying. But look at this other situation whereby you progressively apply brakes. Or even if you are running, you now reduce the speed at which you are running until you start walking or stop. You will go through running, walking, then stopping. 
But here you have running, no walking, stop. Stopping means you fall because of toppling and you stop there. Only two states. So the same applies to here. The particles in solid gain the energy very fast until the breaking off of the particles is strong enough to release all the particles free, making them move to gas state. And the same applies to gas state whereby the particles, when they lose the energy, they lose the energy very fast, abruptly, such that they immediately pack themselves close by, having lost all the energy abruptly, going back to solid state. This is a process we call sublimation. Now, having looked at uh, all the exhalations we have been doing, trying to explain some of the cases that uh, we encounter in our daily lives, let's go through some of these questions that I would wish you answer by picking out the correct response to the question. So I will be giving out a question and uh, uh, four responses and out of the four, one will be the most correct response. Question one, why are gases easier to compress than liquids? Why are gases easier to compress than liquids? The four responses are, one, they are less dense. Gases are less dense. I don't know if that's the correct answer. B, their particles are held together less tightly. Their particles are held together less tightly. Number three, their particles are further apart. And number four, their particles move randomly. Now, looking at the four responses, all of them are right in a particular way. Let's analyze one at a time and see, does it fit it? The question is, why are gases easier to compress than liquids? It is an issue to do with the compression. Compression. When do you allow something to be compressed? If there is spaces. These are the spaces. These are gas. So, for you to be able to compress these particles, you need to have spaces. Look at the solid. No spaces. But here gas, there are spaces. So our answer must have something attached to space. So looking at the first response, they are less dense. Less dense has nothing to do with the space directly. It may have it, but indirectly. But directly, it doesn't have and maybe in relation to others, it will be the correct response. Let's see the others. Their particles are held together less tightly. It's possible particles can be held less tightly together, but they are close by, meaning that we don't have spaces that will allow the, uh, those other particles to move closer to fill the spaces. Number three, their particles are further apart. The particles are further apart. Far apart. So if you are far apart, what is remaining? There's a space. So that comes in to be, I think maybe our answer, let's see number four. So being far apart, it has given us an idea that there are some spaces between the particles. Let's see number four. Maybe it is better than number three. Number four, the particles move randomly. You can still be close by and maybe you are moving randomly. So that one does not give us a really idea on why you should compress gases. So our answer here is number three, or C, the particles are further apart, giving us an allowance of space. However, remember, the other three statements are correct for gases but they are correct explaining different aspects, not the one that has been asked of compression. Next question. What is 
a consequence of the particle in liquid being able to roll over one another. What are the consequences of particles in liquid state rolling over one another? Consequences of particles in liquid state rolling over one another. Just as we have seen for the gases, you may find that maybe the answers are almost correct for liquids. But which one is more correct in relation to rolling? Particles rolling. First response, they cannot be compressed. Is rolling directly related to compression? No. You can still be, roll, uh, be able to roll and not be compressed because they cannot be compressed or be compressed. So rolling and compression not directly linked. But from the liquids, this statement is correct. Liquid particles cannot be compressed because they are closely packed. B, they can be poured, pouring. If you have some water around there, you can try to pour. Is it going out of the container? I'm sure yes. That is pouring. Has it, does it have any connection with rolling? Yes. If it rolls, it will go out. If it doesn't, it will stick inside. So, B comes out to be the most correct response as per the question. And maybe our third and fourth will be much better. Let's see. Number C, they diffuse quickly. Diffuse quickly. Diffusing quickly means moving from one place to another. A particle is here and it moves from here to another point. You can easily be, you can move but without rolling like gases. Gases diffuse. But do they roll? No, they don't. So diffusion and rolling are not in connection. Number four or D, they expand when heated. They expand when heated. Even the gases expand when heated. Do they roll? They don't. So that shows that rolling and expansion are not in connection. So our correct response becomes they can be poured. Because in pouring, it means the particles are rolling over each other. Our third question is, what causes particles of matter to move faster? What causes particles of matter to move faster? You can remember I asked you this question, but now I'm giving you the responses that may make you a bit confused. And out of the four, let's see which one comes out to be the most correct. So what causes particles of matter to move faster? A, weaker forces between them. Weaker forces between them. This is a description of gases. Because we say the particles in the gases have weaker forces between them. Is it because of that? That now particles of gas moves faster? I don't know. Let's wait and see. B. Heating the matter. Heating the matter. When you heat the matter, does it make the particles to move faster? I don't know. Let's see. Number three. C. Cooling the matter, which is the opposite of B. Heating the matter, B. Cooling the matter, C. The question is, matter particles moving faster. So is it because of heating or is it because of cooling? D. Shaking the matter. Maybe you have something in a container and you shake. Does it make the particles to move faster? Now we have the four responses and looking at all the four, they are all describing movement. Number one, weaker forces. If you have weak forces, it means you will be allowed to move, move around. Does it make you move faster? Not always. 
you can have weak forces between the particles but still you don't have more energy to move around just like uh, if you have been given an okay that the school time is over go home and maybe you are feeling sick how long will you take reaching home you will take longer because you are weak you don't have the energy it's not that uh, you have been told by your teachers or whoever is concerned that move slowly no it is because of the energy you are having it is a little amount of energy so it is the energy in you that will make you move faster or slower not being allowed or not be uh, having been allowed or not having not been allowed so our first response is wrong b hitting the matter and that comes out to be correct because when you hit the matter you make the particle to have more energy when you make this sick child to be healed now healthy now having more energy will run home not walk home because he or she has more energy so the answer in moving uh, making the particles move faster is how much energy it has so the more you hit the particle or the more you hit the matter the more or the faster the particle move cooling matter it even makes it to lose the energy so when you lose the energy you become much slower so that is a wrong response and d shaking the matter shaking the matter you can be shaking like solid particles are in solid state fixed state even if you shake the particles in this in this are not moving so shaking does not make matter to move our last question is uh, about temperatures you remember in our previous uh, lesson we talked about what happens during melting and boiling and we saw that uh, during the the two processes two states are ex existing at the same temperature during melting solid and liquid are existing at the same zero degrees centigrade during boiling liquid and gas which is steam are existing at the same temperature now here comes a question directly associated with the, that aspect we discussed so the question is which particles will have the greatest energy which particles will have the greatest energy a water liquid particles at 50 degrees centigrade talking about a liquid but at 50 degrees centigrade water liquid at 50 degrees centigrade water vapor particles at 50 degrees centigrade so we are looking at a gas at 50 degrees centigrade as b c water liquid particles at 60 degrees centigrade liquid at 60 degrees centigrade and uh, lastly d water vapor particles at 60 degrees centigrade 60 degrees centigrade so these are two temperatures we are having 50 degrees centigrade and 60 degrees centigrade and in each of them we have two states that is liquid and gas for 50 liquid and gas for 60 so the question is in which of these four will the particles have more energy and having more energy you remember we said that energy kinetic energy and temperature are one and the same high kinetic energy high temperature and high movement or faster movement of particles are one and the same because each complement the other so because of that we rule out 50 because this one is at low temperature we, are just, we, are, we have just said temperature kinetic energy and the movement go hand in hand so 50 being less than 60 we move uh, we move out the 50 so we remain with the 60 but now we have 60 liquid and 60 gas this is like a case of boiling 
So the particles in gas state, even if they are at 60 degrees centigrade, they have more energy. The energy that was added in so that it can make the particles in liquid state break away to form a gas. Because of that extra energy, which was injected in to make the particles break away, it makes now a gas at 60 to have more energy than a liquid at 60. So the answer to our question becomes D. That uh, water vapor particles at 60 degrees centigrade will have the greatest energy. That marks the end of our lesson today. Thank you.